Welcome to Lock Haven University Volleyball. We're going to be talking a little bit today about some ideas that are really important for our incoming freshmen and our upperclassmen too to keep in mind as they go through uh, the year with their own individual training. So uh, I think the first and the most important question to answer is why do we train? Uh, and you need to give that a little bit of thought. In our training, we do running. In our training, we do weightlifting. In our training, we do abdominal exercises. But the purpose of all of those is to enable us to become better volleyball players. So ultimately, although running is a very important element in training, our goal is not to become a better runner. And although weight training is a very important element in the program, our goal is not to become like the best weightlifter in the world. Our goal is to become the best volleyball player. So it's only as those things contribute to our overall goal that they become important. And the degree that they contribute uh, is the degree of their importance in everything that we do. So once we answer that question, the next question is how do we get better? And uh, that's what we're going to be talking a lot about. We'll be sending you training programs that will tell you exactly how to get better. But right now, you need to look at this in, in broad terms. We get better in several different ways. First of all, we get better by working on volleyball skills and knowledge. And one of the things that I would like to say right now is as you go through all the other training, you always have to continue to work on your volleyball skills. You always have to continue to work on improving your knowledge of the sport of volleyball. If we develop our volleyball skills and knowledge, we become better players. But that's not enough. I mean, it's not enough to be the smartest volleyball player, but I can only touch 8 foot 5 inches. I mean, this is collegiate volleyball. We're playing with the big girls. So the physical dimension is very, very important. So we also have to work on increasing our physical capacity. When we increase our physical capacity, we become better athletes. Okay, if you combine that with improving skill and improving the knowledge of the game, you'll get a better volleyball player than you would if you just played the game itself. <clears throat> And number three, the other thing that we have to continue to work on is understanding and working with other people because volleyball is a very social sport. And by working and understanding with other people, we become better teammates. And that means we have better team play. So all three of those things are important in the development of volleyball players are all very important to me and to everything that we do here at Lock Haven University. Here's a problem. <clears throat> no athlete can reach their full potential as an athlete just by practicing the sport alone. Now at first that sounds a little silly. I mean how, how else can you become a better volleyball player but by playing volleyball? Well, in the, in the initial stages, this is quite true. It's very skill-based. But the, the higher you get in the sport of volleyball, the more important the physical domain becomes. So, uh, the, the, and the reason this is, uh, is that volleyball is a submaximal sport. Although we try to run as quick as we can in volleyball, you never achieve the quickest running speed that a human is capable of achieving in the sport of volleyball. So you can run after balls all you want to. You'll, you'll never improve your, your uh, fundamental athletic running speed by doing that. You have to do other, other work. Uh, even jumping in volleyball is sub-maximal. You'll say, well, I'm jumping as high, high and as hard as I can, so that's maximal. You need to compare yourself with what 
competitive high jumpers do. That's maximal jumping. They understand what a maximal jump is. In the sport of volleyball, all of our jumps are submaximal. And because all the work is submaximal, it is extremely difficult to improve our capacity. Why? Because you cannot improve your physical capacity by doing those things that are below your maximum. In order to improve your physical capacity, you have to push as hard as you can at the highest at the highest level. And uh, and you can't do that just by playing the sport of volleyball. So the supplementary training is very, very important. And the best way to do that is through a well-developed plan of exercises and activities that encompass the, the, the entire year. At Lock Haven University, this is the LHU yearly plan. And you all have a, have a copy of that. Uh, as you look at that yearly plan, there are some things that you need to understand that are really, really important about that. Uh, first of all, in your training, there are th of all the things that you do, there are three different broad categories of exercises and activities. There are general activities that predominate in the general preparation period. There are specific activities and exercises that, that take over in the specific preparation period. And then there are special activities and exercises that predominate during a competitive uh, period. Although, let me say this right now, these elements should be present in any stage of training in different degrees. It's, it's the percent of the total volume of training devoted to each of these that, that, that defines the, the period of training that we're in. So if we were to look at the development of the legs for volleyball, let's say I want to uh, improve my jumping so that I can be a more effective hitter. Uh, we would look at, first of all, the general strength development of the legs. We would do squats for this. And this is a general exercise that has absolutely nothing to do with volleyball, but it is the best vehicle for developing the, the strength of, of the legs uh, and, and the hips. So this is a really, really important uh, exercise, and I can overload my muscles there much better than I can overload my muscles just by doing approach jumps. So squats are a very important general exercise, uh, but they're not enough yeah, uh, to develop my ability uh, to jump. I can't just squat. I've got to jump. I've got to do a lot of things. I, ha I can't just depend upon one exercise. And the reason is that the squat, although it is a, it's a great exercise for the development of strength, it's a general exercise. It's not specific enough to jumping. So in addition, I have to do some plyometrics. Here I've uh, selected box jumps as an example. But I need to do some jumping type exercises to transfer this general strength to the specific needs of the sport of volleyball. And then I also have to do special exercises. In this case, I have selected repeated approach jumps uh, so that we, we will have a transition from general through specific through the special application. And that gives you the development that, uh, that you need for uh, the objective of improving jumping for the purposes of becoming a better volleyball player. Is that important? Yes, it is. A, a nine-foot approach jump is good. A 10-foot approach jump is better. I think we would all recognize if we can touch 11 feet, that's much better than touching nine feet. So the physical dimension is very, very important, and we have to train for it. Finally, the other thing I want to emphasize is what I opened with, and that is you'll always have to remember this. As you're training for volleyball, as you're doing the weight training, as you're doing the running, as you're doing your abdominal work, you must work with the ball and you must play with the ball. So the work that you do with the volleyball 
should never stop. It, ha it has to extend all year round throughout the entire training period. And then these other things uh, are, are done in their different periods in, for the overall goal of making sure that you, you become a better athlete 